The Korg SV2 editor for the SV2 Stage Vintage Piano has been designed to allow you to create or edit sounds, make backups, load, modify and exchange libraries or adjust global settings. While the SV2 panel layout has been kept deliberately simple for immediate and straightforward control, the editor software gives full access to the most advanced editing functions. It's also a nice tool to explore the SV2 and all its available features in a more visual way and to fully understand how it works. Now the editor is available from the Korg official website in the download section of the SV2 page, just here. And there's also a great video on the Korg official YouTube channel showing how to install the SV2 editor as well. So once you've downloaded it and installed it, let's launch it. We do that here. So what happens is it communicates, it's connected via USB here, as you can see, to my laptop. It'll take a moment just to get all the data from the SV2. And then once that does that, you'll see it appear on your desktop and the editor is there. So you can see all of the different parameters in the editor and they're all in tabs, as you can see. Now all the um, controls that are on the SV2 are given a red dot in the editor here. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of parameters that are added to the editor, which you can't access from the keyboard itself. What's great as well is you can do what we call two-way transmission of data. So we can not only change it here on the editor software, but I can watch that then changing on the unit itself. Or if I move something on the SV2, it also changes here in the editor. So it's two-way communication. Another cool thing is the fact you can see all of the different names of the different programs here, which you obviously can't do on the unit itself. So you can see a lot more detail about the sounds in general. And um, we've deliberately omitted some of the parameters from the editor, including um, tap tempo and slow fast rotary speed and also the wah auto pedal function because they're very much live functions um, so they're not in the editor itself for users who are familiar with our sv1 editor software you will notice that the gui is very similar we've just refined it and made it more straightforward with separate sections for sound effects and global settings the important difference is that the SV2 has now 64 favorites locations, eight banks of eight, and the factory sounds, originally 36 and now 72, cannot be overwritten like in the SV1. Chapter two, the graphical user interface explained. So in this part, we're just gonna give you a general overview of what's going on on the interface here in the editor. Of the SV2. So um, at the top here, we've got our kind of normal tabs you'd expect to find in any program. Let's go and have a look at the About tab. That's really useful because it tells you what version of the editor you're running, in this case version 1, and which OS version the SV2 keyboard itself is running as well. So that's really useful just to do a quick check. You've also got some options and preferences. So you can check a box which says warn me when a favorite sound is not saved. So it'll give you a little warning and also save window location. So that'll so save the actual place where this program opens on your desktop. So I'm going to leave those in check for a moment. And then of course, you go into file and you've got all your regular commands you'd expect to find like new, open, save, save as, and also transmit. So if you want to send all the data from this editor straight to USV2. You do it via here. And then of course your general editing commands as well. And then we'll have the keyboard shortcuts you'd expect. Just here, you've got the actual name of the, this current sound you're editing. Um, and obviously then if you then change that, that will change at the top. And if you make any changes, either in the editor or on the unit itself, compare will come up and then you can press that to go back to the original version um, of the if you like the factory preset or the the favorite you've brought in as well so that's super useful and then you can toggle between the two as you can see there um, you've got the four main tabs along the top here for your sound 
editing and also the other sections of the editor so sound is where we are here and what's really nice is when you click a particular parameter it'll go yellow like that and you, you know that that's the one you're editing you can also um, via the keyboard here change the parameters very very finely if you need to do that or of course you can drag using the mouse there as well same thing with the effects tabs all the different parameters are in there don't forget that the, the red ones are the ones that you can actually see on the SV2 itself the ones that don't have red dots are the ones that are exclusive to the editor you've also got a global section as well for things like setting MIDI channel master tuning turning local on and off and so on and then you've got a backup tab as well so this is for doing your backups and making different versions of your collections of sounds as well back to the sound tab and we've got the tuning curve at the bottom here this is brilliant because it allows you to do different types of tuning and even put in your own user tunings as well and save those over here on the, we have the right hand drawer which you can collapse or expand just by using that button there and in there you've got all the factory sounds which you can peruse and then obviously if you select one it'll then send that to the SV2 and you'll play that live you've also got a favorite tab for all the 64 favorites and also that's where you see your tuning curves your user ones as well down the bottom of this you see right favorite so if you want to save a favorite you just click that give it a name on the keyboard and then you can decide where you're going to save it to into one of those 64 locations as well and then you've got backup all data as well so this is where you can s decide where you want to save a backup in your computer give it a name and then press save what's great is when you're in the backup screen here um, you can make a new backup and then you can literally if you want to just drag and drop files into here you can even select multiple files and drag those into a different location if you want to and you can do all your, your normal kind of selection processes so they don't even all have to be together you can just dra drag them straight in and put them where you want. Chapter 3 Frequent Operations Okay so I'm going to take you through some of the most frequent operations we use in the SV2 editor and the first one is quite simple it's how to save a favorite and I'm going to show you how to do it on the keyboard and how to do it on the editor as well so first of all let's go and find a nice kind of sound to start with I've got this nice piano and pad I've found here If I want to then change change that slightly, I'm going to bring the pad sound up a little bit here, you can see in the editor. I'm happy with that. So first of all, I'm going to save it into the panel here on the unit. So I change my bank by holding down the knob there and going to bank A and then holding down number one, because that's when I save it, it will flash and then press it again. And you can see it's there, then saved in the editor as well into A1. Now, if I wanted to save it in the editor, it's just as easy, just slightly different. So <clears throat> let's first of all change the sound slightly. 80s mellow sound. Quite like that. So I'm going to save that into a favorite, right favorite, piano and pad 80s. And I can choose from any of the 64 locations here. So I'm going to go into A2. And there we are saved. So I can recall those from the software or from the panel here. Dead easy. Another great feature about the editor is the fact you can back up all of your data very quickly. So I can just go back up all data and then I can give it a name SV2 editor video, I'm going to call it. Save that's now saved and you've got this really cool tab here backup tab which you can then manage all of your backups at once so at the moment that's the one I just saved 
But if I want to, I can load in one of my earlier backups. So I had one here called SV2 Editor Backup. And you can see they're slightly different. And if I want to then transmit that into the SV2, I just hit the transmit button. It will give me a little warning. I can press yes. A few flashing lights. It's, say, it's transmitting the data. And then you can see here, this is what is reflecting what's actually in the SV2 at the moment. So you can see it's clearly different from what we had earlier. Even better than that, if I want to create a third completely different backup, I can just click the new backup button there. And now I can go back to these ones I've just created and start copying them into this new backup and making something completely new. Uh, so, and you can do, of course, multiple copies uh, and then paste them wherever you want like that. And then, of course, you can save that backup and give that a name and then you, you're going again. So, yeah, just an incredibly powerful way to manage your data in this editor. I also want to show you some things in global. So some of the most commonly used things could be things like doing a factory reset. And all you have to do is press restore there. It gives you a little warning. I'm sure because I've just backed up my data before. And again, it will just send all the data from the editor into the SV2 and it's done. I can also calibrate my pedals from here, which is super useful. So I just press start. Are you sure? Yes. I've actually got three pedals connected here. I've got pedal one, which I just press. This is a switch. Pedal two, which is my volume pedal. And then my damper pedal as well, number three. And then you can see it's automatically done. And it's calibrated, ready to go. You can also change the auto power off settings. So you can see that's on at the moment. What that means is it will go off automatically after two hours which is useful for power saving of course but not so useful if you're in the middle of a gig so you can kind of change that on and off as you as you want so if you're playing live probably best to use that leave that off as well and the final thing is you have a panic button so if you get any of those unexpected midi hanging notes or just some unexpected sounds you're not quite sure what they are and you're not using the sustain pedal and you can't work out why just press panic and it'll kill everything stop it all dead and then you're ready to go again. Of course, there's loads more parameters which you can tweak and change using the editor, and they're all listed in the great user manual which is available on our website. So if, I've not, if there's something that you're looking for, actually I'm not covered here, go and check that out. Chapter four, basic sound editing. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at some uh, basic sound editing here in the SV2 editor, and um, some of the most commonly used things um, for different functions here. So as you can see from the screen there, we've got um, a sound which is made up of up to three sounds or three layers. They're called main, layer one, and layer two. Uh, and this Italian grand sound, for example, is made up of two layers. We've got the main sound itself, and then we've got Italian RX, which were actually some sound effects within the piano. So you've got things like hammer sounds and also the sustain pedal sounds, which all go to kind of make that amazing character of the sound. Now, if for instance, I wanted to add another layer to that, I can do that because this one here is turned off and you can see this is where you decide whether it's a layered or a split sound. So it's on layer at the moment. So all I need to do is turn that on or I can do it on the panel. So I can press function and then these three EQ knobs become my volumes and also the on and off switch. So if I hold it down, it goes off or it comes back on. To change sound, I just need to click in this little box and then I can search through my categories or I can even just type in a search. So let's type in strings and you can see we've got all sorts of different strings I can bring into layer with my piano let's go with the soft strings that's quite nice okay you see that's appeared there now as soft strings my volume I can adjust in real time with our knobs we've also got a pedals 
column here. So you can plug up to three pedals into the SV2. Um, a damper pedal, which I'm using here for sustain. And then of course pedal one, which is a switch, and pedal two, which is an expression pedal. So I've got an expression pedal down below. So what I can do is I can actually uncheck the two piano parts and just control the strings of my expression pedal. So I can do nice little swells with my expression pedal as well which makes it yeah super easy to, to navigate via the editor here. You can also split as I said before so let's select a different sound from our favorites let's just go for a, a kind of a, a regular electric piano sound there we go Mark 1 suitcase so if I wanted to make a split sound now all I need to do is press split it's now split the keyboard at this note C4 which I can change in the editor or I can change it on the unit itself here so let's bring in our uh, layered sound we don't want that sort of pad sound we want a bass sound so we're going to bass and Robert bass let's try that one so that's really nice but I want to be playing in this region with my electric piano so my split point at the moment is C4 which is middle C so I don't actually want that and as I said I can change it here but I can also just um, hold down local off until it flashes and then just press a note that I want to be my split point C4 or let's make it a little bit lower F sharp 3 you can see it's changed there in the editor so And again, we can change what we want to do with our pedals. So we might not want a sustain pedal on our bass, for instance. So yeah, it's just really, really flexible system. I could, of course, have a different type of split. I could have a piano um, or a pad and a kind of lead sound if I wanted to. There's a nice one here, pad synth lead. So that's a favorite. So you see that all of these functions change as well with my favorite which is great it's already a split sound split point now is a3 which is here so what a nice pad down the bottom so this time we've got the damper checked for the lower sound but not for the upper sound and if I wanted to bring in a, lay a second layer for the lead, I can do that as well. So yeah, infinite possibilities. Let's have a look at the effects now. So go back to our electric piano sound that we had. And go into effects. So we just click the tab there at the top. And as you can see, there's lots of different effects and they're all in different sections, just like they are on the keyboard. So I'm gonna show you some of these now. So we've got our EQ section, for instance. Now we've got things on here, which we don't have on the actual keyboard itself. So we can do things like using the middle Q here to bring out that kind of belly sound. Increase it more. And this one as well. We're bringing out more of the bell kind of sound within within the EP, and turn on the pre effects and let's try tremolo from the list here. So you can hear that panning from left to right in a tremolo. And of course, you can adjust all of the parameters here, or on the panel itself as well. In the amp section, let's turn that on. And uh, we're going to leave it on clean. And we're going to bring up the drive. So if I bring up the drive on the panel here, you'll see that the pre volume in the software comes up. And I can start. Getting some really dynamic kind of dirt when I start kicking in about that there. Mm -hmm. 
when I really dig in, it starts driving even more. And of course you can change the cabinet as well. It's good because I can see when I turn that on, this represents the valve here on my left on the actual SV2, which um, really tells you that, that that's kicking in there. Let's have a look at some organ sounds now, still in the effects section. So if we go to a jazz organ sound, that's a pretty dry sound. There's not really any effects. You can see it's all turned off. So let's start, tr start turning some of this on. We've got a nice vibrato, C3 vibrato here. So turn that on. And maybe turn on the amp as well. So that's on the organ setting there. And we've got ro rotary emulation here. By the way, the cabinet is bypassed there because we want to use the rotary. So uh, we turn on the rotary and it automatically got that nice rotary effect. And of course, on the panel, we can switch between slow and fast speed. So you can get some really, really authentic organ sounds coming out of the, uh, the SV2 as well. And of course, at the bottom, you've got your ambient effects. So you've got things like reverbs, which is, uh, which is on at the moment, like a hall reverb. But you've also got delays in there as well. And total effects. So this is really useful. It's got a stereo limiter built in, which you can't actually access from the panel on the SV2. You have to use the editor to, to use that. And it's turned on at the moment, so that that's really useful for equalising out the different um, uh, volumes and sometimes the discrepancies in the levels of the sounds, uh, especially when you're playing live. That's super useful. So so that's in there as well. So when you save a sound into your favourite list, it takes a snapshot of all of this, all of your different sounds, the touch, the mode, the tuning curve and all of the effects as well and even the split point and it saves it all as your bespoke sound. Hope you've enjoyed this run through. If you need any more details please check out the user manual which is available as a free download from Korg.com. Thanks very much.